Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Painting of the Week. I hope you all had an excellent Thanksgiving. I usually don't do videos um, on holiday weekends, but since I didn't do one last week, I felt like I had to do one this week. Um, and before we get to this week's painting, Le Déjeuner sur l'Eub, by Edouard Manet, um, I just wanted to say, apparently a lot of these videos are being used for like classrooms, like teachers are assigning these videos to their students, which I think is excellent. I'm not exactly sure what types of classes these are being used for, but for all you educators out there or students, if you do have any specific requests or like paintings, videos, whatever, it, and it doesn't have to be on art, Latin, whatever, um, let me know and I will make an effort to make a video on that specific topic to help you. When I get a decent video camera here, hopefully for Christmas, um, I'd like to start making videos on other topics too, chemistry, cooking, music, philosophy, other cool stuff. Get excited. So, and that, that goes for anyone. It doesn't just have to, you don't have to be a teacher. If you want to see a painting or a video about anything, just please let me know and I'd be more than happy to make it. Anyway, let's move on now to this week's painting, uh, Le Déjeuner sur l'Eub. This is an 1862 to uh, 1863, it was kind of painted over the course of two years, oil on canvas painting. Um, by the French artist Edward Manet. This is a large canvas, and large on meaning on the scale that would order, ordinarily be reserved for history paintings. So this painting, which obviously is controversial for several reasons, and we're going to explore those in just a moment, but on size alone, this painting already flies in the face of the academic art tradition prima facie as soon as Manet paints it. And it was considered shameless, and it's not hard to see why. There's this implication here of these women as prostitutes. And how do, we, how do we know that they're prostitutes? Well, first of all, they're completely naked. And not only that, they're, they're surrounded by men who are clothed. And additionally, critics uh, sort of scathingly remarked this, this painting had too many things that were going on at one time. You have the nude female in the foreground. You have the additional female bather in the background who's sort of scantily dressed and then you have these two men who are sort of well dressed sort of like uh, dandies <laughs> engaged in this conversation um, toward the foreground and sort of ignoring the women and actually the models that were used for this painting the woman in the foreground um, actually I'm not sure if it's the foreground or the background one of the women uh, is actually Manet's wife he, he used his wife as a model um, and the two men in the painting, he used his brother and his brother-in-law as models for the two men. And, uh, like I said, it, it, critics said that there were too many things going on at one time. The placement of individuals in this painting is a little bit unusual, and this is what we call an additive composition. Additive. The figures are strategically placed so as to create a composition, right, rather than to actually delineate the specific spatial relationships as they would actually exist in reality. And this is important in Impressionism. Manet was really the bridge between realism and Impressionism. Um, we usually think of Courbet as kind of the, the leader of the realists, Monet in, in many ways as the leader of the Impressionists, and Manet kind of came in between and, and bridged these two movements. And in Impressionism, there was this change where the artist's interest in creating an image became superior to any demand for a facsimile of the depicted subject or of reality. So this idea of the additive composition is something that's new to Impressionism and something that would become very important throughout Impressionism, where artists aren't really concerned with depicting reality as it appears, like a realist would have done, but in creating an image or a composition. All right, so now this woman in the front, in the foreground, has this uh, basket of fruit next to her in the fruit. Um, and I guess it's more than just fruit. There's some bread there. It's sort of spilled all over her clothing, just as her, her womanly virtue, we might say, is spilled all over the place by this um, scandalizing and ignominious activity in which she's partaking. Also notice the woman in the back who appears to be washing something in that little uh, creek or river there. You can see the a, a little rowboat. Is notice she's not drawn in perspective. She looks way too big relative to the figures in the front, and it kind of makes it look like she's almost floating on top of them. The foliage in the background of this painting we can see is also heavily abstracted, which creates what we call atmospheric perspective, 
where objects in the foreground are much more clearly delineated or clearly painted than objects in the background, where the artist's brushwork becomes much looser, things become much hazier. Also, the picture plane in the foreground here is exceptionally shallow, and this is critical to understanding Impressionism. This shallow picture plane in the foreground gives the entire composition a remarkable sort of flatness. This technique, this uh, shortening of the picture plane, was something that was adopted from Japanese woodblock prints. And I know I talk about these Japanese woodblock prints a lot when we're discussing Impressionist paintings because uh, the techniques that were, that were traditionally utilized in these woodblock prints were adapted and modified by the Impressionists. And this flatness, like we see in this painting, and really that becomes manifested throughout all of Impressionism, becomes exceptionally important later on, particularly in movements like analytic and synthetic cubism, modernism, and into abstract expressionism, and then even further beyond. So there you go. You can kind of see the beginning stages of this, this flatness, um, something that becomes exceptionally important in modern art, um, beginning here in, in the pre-Impressionist works of Manet. All right, I've got to go watch a very gaga Thanksgiving, but you all have an excellent rest of the week, and we'll see you here same time, same place next week.